Today I'm going to do a haircut that, you know, I haven't done this one in a while, but I've been thinking about it, so I mean, it's a perfect opportunity, I think, to do it. And what's great about this technique, and I'm going to show you as, as we go, that, you know, you can really adapt it for different lengths. So, the idea behind the haircut is going to be three different phases of layering, um, utilizing disconnection. So, think of like a tier system. The underneath being the shortest, mid-length, longest. Now again, what's great about this, you can really adapt it to different lengths. And what I always tried to have fun with is playing with different proportions. You know, so cutting this first one really short. You know, leaving the middle one longer and then longer again. Um, and then just really trying to create a lot of different looks. So, you know, I mean, with most things, it's your imagination that really drives, I think, the creativity. You know, you put a system together, you put a foundation together on how you're gonna do it, you know, but I mean, we can take it into a lot of different directions. All right, so first panel here, yep. like from the occipital down. Yep. Are you, are you graduating or is it a bit more square? Well, there's more square layers. All right. You know, so this, this first panel, and you know, like I said, the fun thing is you could work with graduation, but today I'm going to work a little bit more of a layered, keep a looser, kind of softer outline. It, what's the finished effect? Is it going to kind of have like a shag look or is it going to have more of like a bob look or some, how can you describe it? Well, it, it's definitely going to be layered. I don't think it's going to be as layered as what I would consider a shag because the top is going to be longer. So, you know, a little bit more of a mid-length bobbish kind of look, but a lot of movement, a lot of texture, which I think clients are asking for today. Um, you know, we're always going to have mid-length clients, but, you know, more so than I think working like our pure classic one-length techniques, you know, utilizing more of layering techniques to create more texture in the image. Our old buddy Steve Statland is here and he hey. says hello. He wants to know if you're coming to the HBA's party on Sunday. Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I'm going to be in Canada working. I'm doing two classes up there for our Davinus distributor. Um, so that should be really fun. I'll be focusing on um, men's hair cutting. All right. So this is what yeah. you mean by kind of a square yeah. layer. No yeah. outline. So Not it's yet. Just, okay. Not yet. I'm going to, like right where it starts to get too loose, I'll bring that up a little bit to give it some structure. But, you know, by all means, you can leave it shattered. All right. So now, working the other side, getting the symmetry, getting the balance within the shape. You know, very straightforward. You know, when I cut hair, um, I like to be very direct with my approaches. Um, very straightforward, you know, effective in the overall look. I just got to turn that short so I can get this angle in. Okay. Um, effective in the overall look, but, you know, I, I just don't find that it has to be over, overly complicated, you know, in a million different sections going a million different ways. And you can still end up with something, you know, really beautiful. As you can see, we've had some rain here in Southern California, so something you usually don't see when we're here in the studio working is yeah. water on the ground outside, but uh, you can see today there's a little we're, bit... We're surviving. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So second side, you know, working my square layers, working inside the palm. Notice that I flip my hand over for those that are really focusing on fundamentals. Right, because I think every why do you do that? Why do you? Because you know, a lot of times people don't do that, or they feel very uncomfortable in that position. So why do you do it? Comes down to the length and the proportion, right? So, you know, when I work the one side, I'm combing into my body, and then flip over, and I'm combing with consistency the same way. But now, if the length was longer, or if I was angling out a little bit, where I see my elbow getting too high. It's definitely not comfortable. So I have to do it at a manageable length where my shoulders are relaxed. Sometimes I will work back on the first side and then keep my fingers vertical and then back comb, cross comb this way. I think that's what a lot of people do. Which is perfectly fine. Yeah. You know, and again, it's finding um, what approach works for, you know, your relationship, length of arms, height in relationship to the person you're cutting, right? I, I just decided I want to do this you know, really with the classic fundamental technique. Um, and, you know, that's what I was kind of saying. For those of you, you know, that are still, you know, working on that expertise, right? You know, this is the classic way to do it, something that you want to try. So square from the nape to the top and then square from the back of one ear to the other from, ear? Yeah, from both proportions. Why do you choose square? 
Well, what it's going to do is, you know, vertically, it's going to give me a flattened layer, which is going to remove a lot of weight. And then horizontally, what it helps me do is maintain length behind the ear. And why would you want to do that? Well, I mean, it comes down to the look. If I want that line to be consistently through or the length to be consistently through, I have to compensate for the rise of the hairline. So if I was to just come straight out, what would happen is this would get really short. So it would be shorter towards the front. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and again, that comes down to the, uh, the rise in the hairline from the back hairline to the side hairline, right? So you're compensating for that. Um, we call it square because it's square technically, but it doesn't mean that it necessarily is going to look like a box. So that's uh, cross-checking? Cross-checking. And notice when I cross-check my layers, I comb up to encourage lightness, right? If I was to comb down, what I can end up doing, and I'll just do it, is I'm going to create steps in the hair. And it, I can't see the shape. But if I comb up, I'm creating lightness. And that's ultimately what I'm trying to achieve. Would you say it's okay to cross-check it a little bit higher than you cut it originally? A little bit higher. Yeah. And what that's going to do is just soften. Kind the of, in a, in a way, it kind of softens and, and adds texture to the ends, doesn't 100%. it? Yeah. yeah, especially when you have your thicker. But if you check ones. it lower than you cut it, you're going to make you're a gonna step. You're going to make steps. You know, and when I'm cross-checking graduation, I'm going to be here, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to be down with it because that's what I'm trying to do. Now, even though I pulled back, it jumps up a little bit. The feel of it's quite broken. So I'm not going to cut a really hard blunt line. I'm just going to point in. Still has definition to it, but also just a certain amount of softness. So it, it seems to me like when you kind of square layer like that and then bring the length up, you get a nice like graduated look out it, of it. It definitely will. What it does is it, um, it compacts the shape, which then tends to start to look a little bit more graduated. And we see, I think we see a lot of that like when we see these kind of really seamless graduated bobs. It seems like they kind of square layer the first panel yeah. rather than graduate yeah. it. Yeah. And then bring the length up a lot and you get this, what you've got here. Right. So you see the proportions themselves where this mm -hmm. does look like graduation. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I had to anticipate and pre-plan that I was going to bring that up. Graduation works great, but, you know, on certain textures, it, it looks heavy. So that's, this is a nice way to get a graduated look on your wavy, on your thicker textures. Okay, so that's panel one. Panel is one. that the shortest panel? That's going to be the shortest. All right, so now these next two panels, each one gets longer than the previous? Correct. Now, what I'm looking at here is mid-crown. So when we look at the curvatures of the head, you know, we always have a low point, a middle point, and a high point, the transitions. So we have the occipital, the crown, the apex, the forehead, or your four, you know, major um, curvatures vertically on the head. So I'm going more so just right in the center so if you were to place the comb flat, where the comb lies flat on the head, and then follow that through. Get that section a little bit cleaner. So panel number two. Panel so number two. there's the nape, then there's this middle, and then there's the top. Exactly. And like, I take this. Simple. You know, it, it, exactly. You know, it's, it's the finished look that should be exciting. You know, we don't need to uh, try to make it, again, too complicated to uh, still be effective. All right. So now... I'm going to start this disconnection. Now with this one, I'm going to keep my elevation a little bit higher, right? Because I could come out square again, but it's going to fall heavy, right? So I want it to fall a little bit more seamless. So I'm going to lift up slightly concave, we would say. Take because the head's curving away from you. If you were really square here, it would really start to look graduated, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I said, it's not wrong. You know, you can do it, but you're going to get a more graduated, a heavier look. So we're going to lift that up. Now again, the proportions of this, you can play around with, have fun with it, right? But what I do wanna do is as I cut it and release it, just look and see, you know, is it working together? Are the two blending together, right? Do they look like they, you know, it's one unit, but still with this connection. Now that underneath on wavier hair can help just kinda of lift that out a little bit. Sometimes when you take it really short, it'll help it collapse in. Right, so again, pre-planning. So what's your cutting angle now? Um, I, would, I would refer to it more concave. Right, so it's going a little bit short to long. So you can see the fingers, you know, are a little bit extended out through the bottom. So it's a little shorter on the top, a little, a little bit shorter on the A little extended. Exactly. And how do you choose the length since it's disconnected? Well, if someone's not sure what length to make it. Well, I would say 
th this is like your default, your middle ground. So if that bottom of that section falls just about to the perimeter, it's going to blend a little bit more. Once that starts going over top of the uh, outline, you're gonna see something a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more obvious disconnection. Mm -hmm. If you go short, right, and it's not close enough, sometimes you have to ask yourself, well, why did I disconnect it, mm -hmm. right? Is it gonna make a difference? Mm -hmm. You know, so I wanna keep it more of an internal so disconnection. So the second panel doesn't exceed the perimeter of the first panel. Okay, and then what about your over direction? Are you still over square? Still back, but not as square. I'm gonna start coming around now because if I was to pull that whole front back, what I feel would happen is I would get too much length. So would you say this is more triangular or A-line over more, direction? Yeah, a little bit more like rounder. triangular, it's like a U-shape. Right. right. It's a little bit rounded, but then it widens through the uh, sides of the head. Now here's another good indicator if your length's okay, right? So the relationship, when these two fall together, there's not too much separation here. If I was to over-direct that all back square, this is gonna hang and it's gonna get really droopy really quick. And then you get dog ears. You get dog ears, we don't like that. Oof. Yeah. So, still coming back. And I'm gonna give you a parameter of what I look at when I pull it back just after this section. If you're just joining us, we're here in Southern California. You can see we've had some rain. Unbelievable. George's very upset about this rain yeah. thing. I'm not paying my property taxes yeah. this year. Like, he, he lived in Brooklyn his whole life, mm -hmm. but he comes to California and he doesn't like rain. I hate rain. Yeah. Hello here with Julian Perlingiro, <laughs> my old friend. Guys. He happens to be in town teaching some cutting classes for Davinez, the brand that he's educating for. Yeah. And that is a wonderful sponsor of Hairbrain for many, many years. Uh, working on this kind of creative disconnection. So before you come into the side, uh, just talk about a little bit what you do with Davinez and yeah. why you've chosen to work with them for the past few years. And yeah, well, I just start there. I love the brand. I mean, the brand it, it's a great culture. It's a great brand. Brand. They believe in education. You know, and I think different people get into it for different reasons. It's like some will get into it because you know the sustainability of it, what they do for the environment. You know how 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 they think about the world itself, and that's very important. You know, other people love the culture, the education behind it, which is what I'm affiliated with. So that's my big thing. Um, other people, you know, they love the service that they get with working in the salon, using the products and having, you know, these great products that they can use to service their clients, you know, so it really kind of covers all aspects to me. Um, you know, and then what, what are you doing? You're out kind of almost every weekend teaching classes. Pretty much every weekend. Um, you know, we have different distributors throughout the States. I go, you know, the distributor will request me to go to a salon, do in salon, um, Education based on, you know, different, could be men's cutting, curly cutting, innovative cutting, fundamental cutting, um, whatever that salon's needs are. Um, like right now I'm out here with Bassett, which is, you know, the, the Southern California distributor for Davinus. And I was in San Diego the last two days doing some classes down there, right? And then, you know, I also work with the Davinus cutting team and I work with educating them, um, you know, so for the other people that go out and do these same, you know, similar classes. All right. So looking at the over direction here, a couple things I look at. The curvature of the head. So I'm pulling back, but coming around until I reach the curve of the head where it starts flattening into the side. Then everything starts to come back much stronger. Now, if you had a body, you would notice that the shoulder takes a similar curve. So you can look at the shoulder and I'm following the curvature of the shoulder. Then once I reach the point where it starts to come around to the side, I pull everything back beyond the shoulder. And you know, I do the shoulder on longer hair because that's where the hair is gonna fall and you wanna work with the body. And when I'm working with shorter lengths, I look and focus more on the head shape itself. Right. So you see how that's coming through. It's just really like, I mean, shattered bob I've heard called, mm -hmm. um, textured bob. I like to call it a sloppy bob, <laughs> but I mean, done clean. I like sloppy. Yeah, exactly. And especially when you say sloppy bob and then you go through with this really precise sectioning and this meticulous 
you know, precision haircut. All right. So now, just like just like the back, you're going to get a little bit of um, excess length that you can work off and you can play with the shape. I mean, some people will drop it down. Some people will flatten it through. There's really no rule, you know, um, have fun with it. That's the, the biggest thing. You know, a lot of times I think, especially in the beginning with hairdressers, you know, they want direction, right? And that's great, you know, that's, that's what's needed. But then what happens is you start playing around. Right, you know, you start messing around with different things and saying, "Well, what if I change this a little bit? What if I did this a little longer? What if I did it a little bit shorter?" And you start to um, grow into different things and start to understand it in a different way. All right, so second panel. Second side of yeah, that second panel. So now, again, using the first side as a guide, keeping my elevation so it's slightly shorter through here. Now, on this side, I started out inside my hand, mm -hmm. which is fine. But now what can happen is now I start to get up too high. You can see that my shoulders creeping into my jawline. That doesn't feel so good. Same angle, working over the finger a little bit, right? So you have to make certain... I mean, could you also drop the chair or the client down? You, you could. Um, it's just always awkward to cut this side with the, inside the palm then, especially this angle. At this length and this angle, yeah. you know, definitely a little bit more awkward. When you're perfectly square, it's a little bit easier. Um, when you're slightly angled and it's shorter, that's easy. But once you start getting up here, again, because you're starting to open this area up and get too cramped, just relax the elbow, relax the shoulder, mm -hmm. and work over. Um, well, they're just guidelines. You know, there's a lot of different ways to hold things, but this okay. is just you saying like, hey, this is what works for me. Give this a try. See if it works. Well, that and realizing that there's no one way. Yeah. You know, you, you can't just follow because that's the way this was written. You know, there, there, there are other ways. There's other ways to do it. The most important thing is that I'm creating balance from side to side and I'm creating the same angle. So the finger angle is more important than if you're inside your palm or over your palm. So I'm getting to the point now where I'm getting to that curve of the head. So now this hair is gonna start coming back a little bit stronger. Again, looking, seeing that I'm not getting too much droppage through the outline. What about head position? I noticed you just moved the head. I'm sure there was a reason. Generally, I'll work with the head position slightly away from my body, from where I'm standing. So if in the back it's a little bit forward, if I'm in the side it's a little bit to the 45, when I'm in this side it's a little bit over to the opposite ear. That's below the curvature, right? Once I get above the curvature, the head's gonna be more straight up and sometimes even back a little bit. Cause now I can lift and elevate easier and higher than if it's here. Right? Right. I can't see what I'm doing, and I can feel like I'm on my toes a little bit, so I just tip that back, work the top with it coming towards me, work underneath the curve with it going away from me. You know, we want to get into the head being in the position that we can control the hair and the elevations and the angle as easily as possible, right? I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't have to be, you know, bending and contorting in a lot of different ways. I mean, I'm upright, I'm natural, my shoulders are relaxed, my elbows are soft, my wrists, my fingers, everything just really soft as I work. No strain on the body at all. Everything comes back. You see that angle coming slightly out longer. I'll hold that for one more second, Gerard. So coming back, right? There's my angle, right? Now you also have to look at it in relationship to the head because the head is slightly tilted. Right? So if I turn a little bit there, right? Now imagine if that head was upright. See what I'm doing with my body, right? And I see people do this all the time, guys. You know, this definitely is not good position. It's also hard to create balance. So I want to be here. So the head has to be 
So you just try to stay in a natural upright position and move yeah, the head as, exactly. yeah. You know, and I mean, you have to be sensitive to your client, obviously. I mean, if there's any reason that they, they have a problem with, you know, moving their head from side to side with their neck, things like that, yeah, okay. But that's not going to happen every client or as often, right? You know, and it's definitely, it's not only important for me to be, you know, kind to my body, but it makes the haircut come out better because I have a better sense of balance. Now, from here, my cross check, I'm gonna step over, lift out, up to the top of that elevation, and then just check that through. Pull that out, check that through. You see, not changing the shape, just Cleaning it just very so slightly. And that should just be getting a little bit longer towards the front because of the over direction. Yeah, so, th so think of a U shape. So it's shortest to widest through the sides. You know, when you think about, um, you know, shapes within the haircut, you know, we say triangular, but what is a U? It's a triangle with a rounded apex. Right, so the roundness of what we do softens the shape. So I cut it into a point, and it's gonna be very aggressive, which, you know, hey, give it a shot, see what happens, it might work. Okay, so now do you address the outline again, or? I will, but I just wanna uh, cross check this side. Looking for balance? Looking for balance, and then also, um, I didn't cross check the first side until I did the second. You know, I try to work in steps. You know, so basic shape, on both sides, cross check on both sides. Do you think it's important to cross check everything that you do? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think it's important, definitely. I mean, sometimes too, does it get neglected? Yeah, and that's why I answer it with that kind of tone. But, um, you know, um, it should be, you know, because what can happen is if we don't cross check, you know, I mean, it's bad habits to get in. You know, and anybody who thinks their haircuts are always perfect, you know, probably aren't cross-checking them. You've got uh, a really nice comment coming in from Arlene Marek. Okay, very says, cool. The kindest man and most generous teacher, a beautiful human being. Uh, thank you. <laughs> That's very nice. I, I like that even better than saying you like my haircut. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now, so you see the outline, right? And now, like I said, you can play with it. There's the shortest point in the front. Right? So from the layers. Yeah, from the layers. So if I want to take that up to this point, that's perfectly fine. Um, I still I wouldn't do it too blunt because the whole kind of feel of the haircut is soft. So now I mean I could work in here and just lightly push that hair forward. Right? Just so you're just opening and closing without closing yeah, all the way? Just kind really of like light slicing. Yeah, you feel it. You know, you can feel the hair in there. And obviously, if you cut too quickly, it's going to cut it all off. And you see just lifting that out, right? Just a little bit more of a flow to it there. Mm -hmm. Now, if I pull it down, you know, it's not going to be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. But then again, it's a fringy look. So I'll do that same here. Get that top out of the way. Calm that down. So you've got that length in the back, and now you're, you're kind of Working starting right there. off that. Open and close, uh, closing all the way, and yeah. just... Right from... Uh, you don't just get it once. You go through it a few times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, because you're pushing the hair, so it's going to miss a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm using the outline from phase one or panel one mm -hmm. to now do the outline through the sides of panel two, phase two. So, you know, there is... I think with most disconnections, there's certain um, common areas that do have a visual blend to them, mm -hmm. right? Because if everything was just disconnected or like if it was so extreme, like I cut everything in my fingers and just leave this part down to the, you know, the waist. It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's not going to fit within balance. It can look cool, you know, I mean, but... Fine line between cool and weird. Exactly, you know, and I think working in the salon, I mean, my goal is to make people look pretty, right? And we have to work within, you know, boundaries of symmetry. You know, it's just like, what's, what's music without boundaries and parameters? It's noise, right? So with shape, with um, design, there's parameters that we have to be, you know, we have to account for. But always push the limit. 
Okay, so this yeah. is your third and final this is panel. The third so it's panel. three panels, each one's disconnected. Yeah. What's going to happen now? It's going to be magic, Gerard. I like magic. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to take my sections across the top, start out in the crown. And I'm going to turn her so you can see. Now, with this panel here, I want to get my length to fall just slightly over top of the underneath, right? Um, again, I don't want it to fall all the way down and extend it past the perimeter. I want it to be an internal disconnection. So lifting it up, measuring my length if I need, just go, okay, there's my length from underneath, and then going over top of it. If you have any questions about it, cut it too long, right? Mm -hmm. Then have a look, and then go back and cut it a little bit more. So they're really visually blending where they fall, not connecting not where you sure. lift them to. No. You look at where it falls and you go, I want it to hit right here. Exactly. And then because it's cut at high elevations, there's no lines or anything. So right. when it's it seamless. falls over, it's seamless. Yeah. Your, your layers are going to give you your more visual blend with disconnections. Mm -hmm. And also, this is absolutely amazing on curly hair. Like I teach a curly cutting class. I love doing this. Especially because when you want to keep the top long with a little bit of weight, because we know what happens when we cut the short, short hair um, and curls. on the top of curls, you start to look like Gina Montana from uh, Scarface, mm -hmm. right? Big Afro, which is awesome. But if you want something a little bit more controlled, leave that length, let it drape over the underneath, and you have this soft look to it. So the texture, a little bit of texture helps it blend. And then also, you know, the technique, the layering technique. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to comb everything strongly back to number one. So we would, you know, refer to this. So you just made area. this guideline, looking at how it's going to fall over the back, and now everything yeah. just gets directed back to it. Exactly. You know, and that's one of the things that when I'm teaching class, I'm, I'm always trying to just emphasize this, emphasize this, emphasize this. You cut hair with your eyes, right? You, you, you make decisions with what you see, and you, you have to do that, right? Because it has to look good. The technique, the decisions on, you know, the sectioning, the elevation, and the cutting angle will only give you what your eyes tell you they want. So you have to look at it. You have to see and have a vision, right? It's like when you're doing color on hair, right? You have to know what color you want to do before you go in the back bar and mix something up. You know, so you make a formulation. So all this going right back to that stationary guideline. Yep. And the line is, is square? Still, yep. Now um, my fingers are straight flat. Just across. a straight flat line. <laughs> you know, and most haircuts, like we talk about circle, square, triangle. We talk about layers, one length graduation, I would say most haircuts are a combination of all the different things together, mm -hmm. you know, and it's how you choose to place them. So if you look from profile, you know, you start to see this kind of draping over a little bit. It's nice. I'll point out that this is an Erica mannequin from Pivot Point. Yeah. Uh, we work uh, exclusively with Pivot Point for educational mannequins, and uh, this is a fantastic one. And then what are you using for scissors today? Uh, these are these are the hairbrain scissors. Um, what series are these, Gerard? HB Pro One. HB Pro One. See, I always forget all these numbers and letters. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's a brand new pair, too, right? Brand new pair. How do they feel? Sharp, sharp, sharp. The class yesterday they're like, "Your scissors are so sharp." I'm like, "They're from Hairbrain. Here, have a try." Mm -hmm. uh, um, but uh, you know, there's a lot of different types of scissors and different, you know, styles. I mean, I love the handle. On this, it's very easy to use, very simple to maneuver different ways and cut the hair. Um, the length of it's also. So you know, five and a half. Yeah. You know, so sometimes I use something a little bit bigger, but if I really want control, five and a half is the way I go. And that's an offset handle, which is meant to be more comfortable design like the human hand. The very comfortable. Th the thumb is, you know, not aligned with the third finger. So neither should the scissor hole be, although some people like a straight handle, which yeah, is fine. I can, I can use a straight handle, mm -hmm. you know, but these, these definitely have, you know, a good com comfort factor to them. 
you know, again, it, it, they're, they're made. So now you can see, just you can see that this connection must have a peak of that joint. So there's phase two, right? There's phase three, right? So that's that's the disconnection between those two areas. Nice and clean. Look at that. You still got it. You can still Not cut clean. Bad. You know, and also um, when you're doing a stationary guide. It's really easy to have it not, you have to really get the tension right, right? It's really easy to have it not come out clean when you go to cross check it. And what I try to do to um, help that come out as clean as possible is just really work with a good control on the, uh, the tension of the hair. So you can see short to long. It's probably my last section. Now that underneath, I don't need to worry about the underneath. I already cross checked it. And it's not going to reach this panel, so I can just comb up, you know, any, here you go, guys. Any little hairs that slipped out, that fell out, that didn't get into my section, that's okay. Just check that in. You know, and I think also when we look at precision and accuracy, you know, that's something that we're constantly working on. And it's something that, you know, when, when I, and I'm sure Gerard would agree, first started cutting hair, um, if it was if within a half inch, you'd, you'd be happy, right? But as you get more and more control and accuracy on what you do, you get more precise. And your haircuts come out with better balance and better execution, which in my mind is always going to grow out better. It's always going to last longer. You know, it's like when a haircut is done really well, and your client comes back in six weeks later, it doesn't look like it's lost its shape, it just got too long. It still maintains a shape. So three panels, square in the nape, both horizontally and vertically, kind of um, a little bit concave in the mid panel, yep. <clears throat> and a bit rounder, mm -hmm. and then Again, cutting short to long Flat. and square. Yeah. And then, I mean, you can just see how everything yeah. meshes together really nice. It's pretty. Yeah. No, that, that, that's it. And it's also, I mean, just listen, without doing anything, you can see the shape. And I also try to say this to every class. I'm like, if it doesn't look good now, what's going to make it look good in 10 minutes from now? Right. You know, as you're cutting, it should look good as you're going, right? So I shouldn't have to now recut the whole thing. I shouldn't have to now overly style it to make it look good. That defeats the purpose of... What about texturizing, like point cutting or using a razor control. or something like that? Control. I'm not going to do it to... Like, at this point in the haircut, I'm going to do it to enhance what I've already done. I'm not going to do it because it doesn't look good. Right? So just like at this point, if I want to, you know, play with the length a little bit and I want to take this down and let's say I want to make it look a little bit uh, softer, a little bit wispier, just going through and just slicing into it can help. I could take a razor and I could work into it and take away some weight. It really just depends, but everything is done with purpose and I'm not changing, I'm enhancing the haircut. You know, and it's also, there is a certain amount of freedom and, you know, uh, it being an organic look. And I think that's kind of like the essence of, you know, what I wanted to try to achieve. Um, I wasn't looking for something with, you know, pinpoint precision in the, in the outline. Now, if I, wanted, if I had a client that did want that, I would cut it blunt first. I would go through and cut this perfect one length and then introduce the layers to it. You know, but then also just looking at, you can't really see an obvious form of disconnection. What are we using now? A little bit of the Davinus uh, mousse. Why do you choose this? Well, I mean, I think this has a light hold to it. Got it. Um, it also has uh, it has a little bit of it has a little bit of condition to the hair, you know, and it's not something that 
is going to make it heavy or sticky or anything like that. You know, it's going to be, I like touchable hair. I like hair that can be, you know, touched throughout the day, allowed to dry, very natural, very organic. Our buddy Sid is uh, joining, Sid Sotong. Uh, hey, hey, Sid, how's it going, man? Old friends and yes, co yeah. peers, co-workers. See, that's what I miss about doing the Facebook Lives. Yes. Thing. Just kind of, it's like staying in touch with all the people that you love. Yep. Right. So you telling Sid that you love him? Oh, yeah, man. Sid and I go way back. And you. Yeah. <laughs> we all do. Yeah. Right? So you can see how it just enhances the waves, right? And everything just kind of falls together. You know, you, you can't really notice, like, hey, that haircut's not blended. You know, that's something that I would find is too, you know, too obvious. And again, I'm, you know, I'm not the fashion police, man. Do what you want to do. Get up and turn it around yeah. for him. You know, do what you want to do. Be as extreme as you want. Be as, ex as extreme as what your client wants. You know, I'm not going to tell you it's right or wrong. Uh, it's only wrong when it doesn't come out like what you thought. 